Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John and as always thank you so much for being here. We got a really good topic for you today with our one hour format so let's get to it. Teachers of Reddit, what's the scariest thing you've ever seen a student do? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This boy who was four or five, I would help my mom who was the actual teacher. This kid would constantly cry all the time no matter what we did. I would always sit with him and color, talk, just anything to try to help him feel better. He would always make sad pictures of himself crying and a monster. He said no one believed the monster was bad. I told him we all have monsters sometimes but we have to be brave because once we face the monster sometimes they go away. I ended up telling his mom about this monster and she wasn't sure what it could be. Long story short, the monster ended up being his dad. He cried all the time because the dad was inappropriately abusing him. I hate saying it any other way. Every day he was home, but the mom actually walked in on it when she got off early from work one day. She tried to shoot the dad. He ended up in jail. She told me she just put the kid in therapy. I have not seen him since, but that has stuck with me. I thought it was just a creepy thing he thought about, the monster make-believe or something, but no, his monster was real. He didn't really do anything that scary while he was with me, but he did bloody scare me after he was gone. I had just become the class teacher of 30 ninth graders in the middle of the school year and had to tell a student that he was expelled because he'd only shown up to class three times in six months. We had a nice chat before that. I had told him I felt I was missing the bigger picture here as I was new to that class, but that I still felt bad because he didn't seem to be the kind of guy who just skipped classes because he didn't feel like leaving his bed. He was very polite, thanked me for being gentle, shook my hand, turned around and clocked another student, breaking his nose, ran out of the room and pepper sprayed the door area to cover his retreat. So that was awkward. Days later, I finally had time to go through the administrative files of my new students. His file was full of drawings. He liked to draw in class when he still came. He drew mainly AK-47s. He was born in Russia. We were in Western Europe. Around the AK-47s, love poems to the AK-47 in Russian, scenes of, well, AK-47s in action, and lists of fellow students. My predecessors had confiscated these drawings and his hit lists and put them away in a file that most people wouldn't even touch because it's mainly for documentation of things you already know when you're their teacher. Nobody had told me that there might be an effing problem waiting for me. Nobody had told a social worker of the school, probably because he didn't disrupt classes. Also, nobody had told me that the other student and his pals had bullied him relentlessly for a year before he decided to stay away from school. I guess I wasn't told that because no teacher knew as they hadn't effing cared to find out why he was spending recess alone, sitting for himself with a thousand yard stare. I learned that when the other students had warned up to me and started telling me things like that. Answering this as a school bus driver, close enough. Literal first day of school, a student, seven, grabs a girl that was getting off the bus from behind and pretends to cut her throat with his finger. Whoa, Nelly. Instant front seat, instant write up. Principal, boys will be boys, ignore it. Third day of school, same student gets up while we're doing 55 miles per hour and finger guns several students in the back of the head execution style. Mother of God. Big write up. Principal. Boys will be boys. You can't put him in front seat for that. It was playful. No, no. The absolute F. It was not playful. He did the same thing the next day, but this time I had the principal time stamped on my camera telling me I wasn't allowed to put him in the front seat and him doing it again. I rode up the kid, and the mother effing principal, instant shit show, pulled into safety office at work with transportation director, warned I could lose my job if I escalate this shit, but I didn't back down, I wanted that kid off the bus. But if I couldn't have that, I needed him to be in the front seat away from everyone else. I got it. Principal was banned from coming within 50 feet of my bus. She couldn't stop herself and did so after two weeks to tell me I was an awful person. She was immediately removed from her position because I wrote her up again. They gave her a counselor's spot at a high school to finish the year. 
Not sure if she did. Anyway, new principal rides the bus, tells me he's got the kid now. And the kid's so effing scary that they have to have him in his own class now, with two adults. But that the mom refuses to get the kid any help or admit there's a problem. I'm told not to allow anyone within three seats of him. And one day, kid says, Bus driver, do you think people are colorful on the inside like robots or all boring in the same color like my dogs? I followed up. He casually tells me he's killing his dogs and put their parts on the fence four times. His sister rides a different route, had told me when he was three or four, he sat on the cat and killed her on purpose, that she had to sleep with her door locked because he'd tried to kill her in her sleep multiple times. She moved out the day she turned 16, and in that state, no one could make her return home. And he said, on the day that he confessed to killing his dogs, don't worry bus driver, mom's going to get me a new puppy. Sure shit, dropped him off at daycare, and mom was there to surprise him with a new effing puppy. At 15, he killed his mom, his aunt, his two little cousins, and all of their dogs, and went to school, covered in their blood, not believing he'd done anything wrong. He'd kill them because he wanted to go to a friend's house, and she said no. Kid who was killing and dissecting cats, dogs, and hamsters made a few attempts at killing a sweet younger sibling and got into fights all the time. He would say the most awful things in class, like when asked what he wanted to do for vacation, mentioned luring a kid into the woods, getting him lost, so he'd die in the forest. He was gleeful about it, like he genuinely thought this would be fun. He left my grade, and then I had one of the younger siblings who was always coming in exhausted and scarred, bruised, etc., because his sibling would hurt him. We were told the most awful stories, throwing bunnies in a pillowcase and hitting the wall until the pillowcase was red, pulling whiskers off of a cat and then suffocating it, drowning a neighbor's puppy in oil, just horrible stuff. His mom would stay after hours just sobbing, talking about the ways she'd try to get him help and now there just weren't resources available. Insurance and the state wouldn't sign off on sending him to a treatment facility because he had not succeeded in permanently maiming or killing anyone yet. We reported it, but we kept hitting the same wall. The parents took every sharp thing, every weapon, out of their house. They were hyper-vigilant because if he got so much as a pin, he'd use it on someone or some animal. They tried a short-term hold, but it made things worse. He just learned tricks to hurt and get things that he wouldn't have otherwise. His dad worked out of town to try and afford therapy and intervention, so he was gone a lot. So a lot of the kid's rage at being controlled fell on the mom and siblings which is likely why one day he managed to get a hold of a gun at a relative's house and then hide it and wait for his mom and siblings to pull into the garage. He then killed them and tried to blame an intruder, but the evidence was pretty clear cut that he'd done it. The way I heard it, the first thing before the police had put it together yet, that the dad said when he got a call from the cops was to ask if his son had killed his family. He just knew and yeah, he was right. The dad and mom both worked so hard to try and find some resource, some help, and there just wasn't any, anywhere along the way. It was such a chilling domino of failures to watch that happen in real time, and so completely heartbreaking. They were good parents. They did everything they possibly could have done. Everyone knew it was just a matter of time with him. I mean, if this is real, how did it ever get to this point? I know we always say hindsight is 2020, but my goodness, the warning signs. Somebody had to do something. I was teaching grade four and had announced my pregnancy to the class when I was about four months. Everyone was so excited. One little guy, however, made it his mission to try and hurt my baby. On several occasions, he kicked a soccer ball at my bump, would try and trip me, and one time even said, let's meet this baby while opening and closing scissors. There was some other contributing factors, but I ended up taking leave early due to anxiety over this. So, so weird. When I returned next year, he had moved to a different school. Not evil scary, just scary. My dad was the elementary school principal, and there was a little girl in one of the younger grades who would fall asleep during class and wouldn't wake up no matter what her teacher or my dad or the paramedics my dad called would do. She eventually would wake up on her own after several hours, 
She did this randomly, scaring her teacher, my dad, and her parents a lot. Sadly, eventually she died in her sleep at home. I have had several dangerously violent children over the course of my career, but it's been really bad the past three years. Kids trying to steal my teacher scissors so they could stab someone, flying desks and chairs, kicking and punching adults, self-harm, physically attacking younger students, vandalism, screaming and crying so loud, no teaching can happen, growling when angry, running away. I had a student last year who would get upset and stand against the wall, banging his head until blood started to smear the wall. Yes, we tried to stop him, but it usually involved three or four adults restraining him. Kids can be really hard to restrain when they're thrashing around. It never surprises me to hear of kids my students' ages being put in handcuffs. His mom said the wall banger was fine and didn't need any counseling. My principal encouraged me to work harder at building a relationship with him. The kid would usually be returned to class within 30 minutes of being dragged out with a bandage on his head and a bag of hot Cheetos. I teach kinder and first grade. Had a kid who was likely psychosociopathic. Other staff often labeled him as super cute and had a great smile, but the kid was disturbingly good at getting large groups to follow him, and there was always something off and kind of fake about his happy tone of voice, like it was coming from someone 10 years older. From time to time, kids who'd I'd known to be a follower of his would do something wrong and completely out of character, but it was always difficult proving he was actually the cause of it. One day on the playground, I noticed he kept relocating his group out of earshot of staff. When the staff moved, the group moved somewhere else. I kept close enough to be noticeable to them, and eventually the kid came up to me and said something like, don't you think the younger kids need more attention right now? And I said, nope, I think I'm right where I need to be. To which all emotion disappeared from his face. He looked me dead in the eye and coldly said, no, I think you need to go somewhere else right now then gave a large smile and went back to friends. I referred to him as Manson to the other staff from that day forward. For me, it's not what I see. I have seen your typical high school garbage happen, fights to the point of unconsciousness, students stating they're going to kill X, Y, and Z student, lots of knives, no guns though, etc. It's what you hear from kids. So far, I've known five SA issues, two R's from a family member, five or six pregnancy scares and they can't tell mom, two or three serious suicidal ideations, no food in the house for more than I can remember. These are the things that mess with my mind at night. My classroom is under control, what happens later is not. To play along though, when a kid overdosed in class was a little alarming, trying to wake up a teenager while also not trying to curse or hurt him, sternum rub, which could lead to a lawsuit was not fun. I didn't actually sternum rub him, but I was close to doing it. I had called for the nurse, but they were already gone. The admin was taking their time getting there. The other kids were cool about it though. For anyone wondering, he made it out just fine, and from what I know, at least attempted college. I had a student who became obsessed with my colleague. The student was unstable and had threatened suicide multiple times. He started to believe he was in a relationship with this other teacher, and it was the only reason to live. He'd corner the teacher a lot, trying to get them to be alone. He told other students they were in a relationship. He even sat outside the teacher's apartment after following him home once. When I heard and saw how his crush was escalating, I talked to the teacher and reported my concerns to admin. The other teacher was afraid he would lose his job because we're in the South, and he's gay, so he didn't know how to handle the situation, but was very uncomfortable. He was right. The student totally flipped out when admin and guidance confronted him. He assured them it was a real relationship, and started trying to corner other staff to find out who told him. He was escorted off campus by police multiple times. The teacher was put on leave and just quit and moved to another state. After which, someone told the student I'd been the one to report to admin. He started following me, trying to find out where the teacher moved, interrupted my classes over and over, even though I didn't teach him, wanted to know what the teacher's new address was, and threatening me. I had to be escorted to my car at the end of the day several times. We were all afraid of the student. 
He once stood outside the school for hours in front of the flagpole, crying. I was sure the kid was going to hurt himself or someone else. I begged everyone to get the kid help. His mom didn't believe any of it was true and refused all help that was offered like counseling and a psyche vow. She told the school that if they called her again, making up stories about her son she'd sue. It was a mess. It's really terribly sad that it came to that teacher leaving. Hopefully he left on his own accord and decision to do so. After 15 years in preschools, this last year was the most difficult. I often felt more like a bouncer than a teacher. My group of 16 students would normally be a breeze. You get a range of characters and maybe one or two high need students, but this year, by the end, I realized we had about six to seven high need students, almost half the class, four of them prone to violence. If I could get one to stop, I could get the next to stop fighting, but by the time I got to the third or fourth student, the first would run up and hit someone else. Blocks would go flying, and several times I had to dodge Cuisinart rods, one meter sticks, my glasses and bean broken once and spit on multiple times, and my shirt ripped all in attempts to stop them from hitting each other. Though the one act that disturbed me the most was around the time we had an outbreak of rotavirus, hot projectile vomiting. We give the students the benefit of the doubt and privacy in the bathroom as you do, but one particularly screechy student had started going and pouring the other kids' toothpastes in the bathtub. But every day or so, we wanted to show him that we believed in him, that we could trust him. As we were getting ready to go outside one day, Three students started fighting over where to put some shoes, but I didn't see Jay or hear his usual yelling. I asked my co-teacher, and she told me he asked to go to get his water bottle from the class about 10 minutes prior. She chose to handle the battling students, and I went to the class bathroom. There was Jay, grinning his demented grin and laugh next to the toilet, toothbrushes all on the floor, and in his hand as he brought it into the toilet. I shouldn't have taken it from his hand, but I did, and the screeching started. We had to store the toothbrushes and toothpaste away from the students until Jay left. Oh, this one is easy, sadly, too many to list, but this one stands out. Probably somewhere around my eighth year of teaching, lord, I'm so damn old, I had a student attempt suicide in the bathroom. Now, I always keep a first aid kit in my classroom at all times complete with tourniquet because America, and I teach middle school. So when I heard some screaming from the bathroom, I automatically assumed a fight until someone started screaming, she's bleeding everywhere. I grabbed my kit and just rolled into the girl's bathroom to see blood everywhere as one of the older students, eighth grade, had slashed their wrists deep. Start yelling to call 911 and apply pressure to the wound. The girl, who was semi-conscious, kept whispering in my ear, let me go, and it's okay while also haunting me and saying, I don't want to die. Thankfully, emergency services came quickly and were able to get her to hospital. I just sat on the bathroom floor in the pool of blood and just started crying, legit crying hard, something I've never felt or done before, like a deep whale shit. This, of course, freaked the kids out because you have to imagine that I am not the smiliest or emotional teacher in the school to where the students now started freaking out admin came in and just sat with me as I cried my heart out. Needless to say, I took two days off, which thankfully led to the weekend. I think it hit me so hard because I was also quite depressed in middle school and had similar thoughts of suicide. Of course, it also hurt because I have a daughter. It just hit me all at once and I was a wreck for weeks. Girl survived and last I heard has a family and is doing well. Her mother had just died of cancer, which led to the depressive episode. I've had many things happen over my years of teaching, but this definitely was a top three scary. I was a teacher for 15 years. This happened to my girlfriend at her school. Grade two teacher hears sounds in the back coat closet. She finds a boy and a girl from her class, six to seven years old, in the missionary position. When the boy hops off, he's not erect. They were just pretending. Call both sets of parents in. Turns out, all together on Saturday nights and have porno nights. They watch porno, what, with the kids in the room. So these two kids were just mimicking what they saw. 
Child aid was called and my guess is P night got canceled. Ugh. I used to pick my younger sister up from her school. She was in year three back then. That day I came in a bit early and found the students creating chaos and screaming. There was no teacher there. My sister and other students were crying and running out of the classroom. I decided to look into the matter and what I saw shocked me to the core. There was this little girl with a blade in her hand and pointing it at her other arm, threatening others that she would cut herself. Also, the fact that she was laughing the whole time made it much more scary. By the way, it was an actual sharp blade. I escorted the students to leave the class and screamed for the teacher. Crazy day. Not a teacher, but a classmate of mine. He sat behind me in one of my junior year classes. Long story short, he wasn't around at the beginning of our senior year because he was in jail for capital murder. I was a bit oblivious back then, so I never picked up on the death row level of creepy. Other people did, which is why he was an outcast. When I was teaching special classes, a nine-year-old did a 180. I adored him in the beginning. He was so sweet. Suddenly started to pull his junk out to show everyone. Wrote sexual things everywhere. Tried to do weird things with other students or teachers. Head behind breasts, head on junk. Squeeze everyone. Swore at everyone. Starting throwing everything around. Said he'll find my house and kill me. Now teaching kindergarten and had this one boy run and fall. Immediately blacked out and stopped breathing, went cold. Only woke up a while after, but struggled to speak and his eyes crossed. It scared everyone. The cleaning lady shouted, he's dead, in front of the other kids. He ended up okay with no issues at all. Early 90s, in middle school, I was a sixth grader and in our band class with one of my friends being this nicer guy named John. Hey. He was in seventh grade in this class. Any grade could join with me. However, there was another guy named Ben who was in this class that was also a 7th grader and he was mean as hell. One day, there was a mandatory 6th grade assembly and the band director had to walk us across campus to the assembly. John confided to me that, when you leave, I know Ben is going to hurt me. The pain in John's face was indescribable. I didn't know what to do, but my mom was the art teacher at the school and Luckily, the art room was next to the band room, and when our teacher let us out, I made sure I was the last in line. My mom was a cool teacher, but she smartened me up to being a teacher's kid and told me never to tell or report what other kids do as some tattletale. But this I felt was going to be extreme, and luckily she was hanging up a new art display in the hall, and I told her what John said to me. She said she understood and promised she'd check in on the class. The whole half hour assembly, I'm a nervous wreck and wonder if John is okay. Luckily, he was. According to my mom, she walked in just to check on the class and found that Ben had John pressed up against the wall. Ben had a protractor compass needle from math class out in his hand and he had the needle in the ear canal of John. Luckily, mom caught him before any physical damage occurred. John was incredibly rattled and Ben caught a semester long suspension from school. Years later, John worked in the music industry and even won a couple Grammy Awards for his efforts. Ben, however, didn't turn out well at all. More suspensions and expulsions, he eventually became a drug dealer and one night tried robbing a fellow drug dealer while driving around. The dealer shot him in the chest and then set the car on fire where he subsequently burned to death. He was only 18. Well, I'm glad to hear things worked out for one of them and sad that the end came for the other one way too young riot literally it was a riot remember that year when people were calling in bomb threats to schools all over the country the high school i taught at was one of them so at least once a week we had to evacuate the building and go to the elementary school behind us and we sat in the gym well one of these times two rival gangs in the school started a fight one student revealed he had a taser and all chaos broke out in that elementary school we had to get the police officers from not only our own city but two neighboring cities to come and get it under control. Our principal got a black eye and the assistant got a concussion. Several police officers were beat up too. ETA that I taught high school, so these were freshmen and seniors fighting. Kindergarten teacher. I taught a student who seemed to be unusually controlling of adults. 
Not so much kids and peers, but the adults, because of his charm and adeptness at manipulating adults, got to school district psychologist to watch the kid a few times. He wanted to see his interaction with his mom and her boyfriend at home. Fast forward a couple of weeks and the kid was put in a remedial psych ward and the psychologist reported to me that he was alarmed at the amount of control he had over his parents, like a legitimate psycho in a five-year-old body. The kid had slowly accumulated about 200 stolen knives and sharp things, as well as a gun with bullets that didn't match, and stashed them under his box spring mattress and had a picture book he drew on how he planned to kill his mom and her boyfriend. The scenarios in which she was depicted were common times she said no to him. The psychologist said it was the second time in his 27 years of practice that he had a legitimately psychotic child. Freaky. I was watching two students from the younger preschool group, both around two to three years, playing a few days from Christmas. Boris put a box on Tony's head and they both laughed with the sound of Christmas music in the background. Tony put the box on Boris's head and more laughter. This went on for about two minutes with them giggling and laughing. And then Boris took the tinsel and pulled the gold decoration down, revealing just a wire. He lunged at Tony, wrapping it around his neck and started strangling him like an old-time mafia hit. Boris would eventually be expelled on account of his parents not trimming his nails. Why was this important? He had mauled multiple students, leaving bloody cuts down their faces and mutilated and scarring Tony one nap time into shitting himself. The mother, in tears, tried to explain without explaining, the father is just strict and the school wasn't strict enough. I used to be a school social worker, and I am male. One time I did an intervention with a couple of middle schoolers, probably my second year on the job, so I was 26 years old. It was conflict resolution, and I was facilitating it with one of the counselors. This young lady, the conversation didn't go the way she wanted it to, but it ended up coming to a nice resolution between the two students. I guess she told her parents or someone that I inappropriately touched her. Thank God my facilitator as well as the other student said I never made contact with her or anyone while we were doing the intervention. It got sorted out quickly, which I was grateful for, that I wasn't put on leave or anything. I believe the student admitted to making it up a bit later as well. Haven't had anything else like that happen in my eight years working. That one will always stick out to me. I remember a brief moment of feeling an absolute horror. Fairly recently, I had a 15 to 16 year old boy who was incredibly aggressive and assaultive toward girls. His ex dumped him for cheating and pretty much every time he saw her, he'd call her a bitch, throw things at her, shove her into things, all sorts of shit to discipline her. He failed every single class. He was a horrible student, but we ultimately decided that we couldn't hold him back because he would have been a 16 to 17 year old ninth grader and we didn't think it was safe for him to be in a class with girls who were two to three years younger than he was. There was a lot of issues with discipline at the school, and he never faced any lasting consequences. He should have been expelled for repeatedly assaulting female classmates, but I guess their learning didn't matter as much as his. I'm no longer at that school. The kid still is, to the best of my knowledge. Well, I'm happy to hear that you're not at that school anymore. Crazy to think that someone like that could still be. It's terrible for the other students and faculty. Not good. Not a teacher, former classmate, but almost 30 years later in a different state and with no ties left to the school, I still remember that as if it just happened. First grade, I was seven years old. There was this really nice kid named Steven that I should have been nicer to in my own right. He was sweet and funny. He looked a little different, more pale than anyone else, but still a great kid. Then there was Dustin, who showed up later into the year. Dustin had something going on because he started off being polite, then a switch flipped and he was a mean prick and for some reason targeted Steven. So one day, we're all having reading time, it's quiet and chill. The switch flips, Dustin gets up pulls Steven on the floor, sits on his stomach and wraps his hands around Steven's throat. There was no provocation, no trigger or anything. It was just a raw anger band hate. And that look in Dustin's eyes haunts me. 
The look on Steven's face as he's gasping to breathe makes my lungs tighten. I left the school and state the following school year, and I really hope both of them are doing all right. Had a girl randomly start crying frantically, so badly she couldn't breathe properly, and this kept going for like 30 minutes. Mother picked her up and she was still struggling to breathe and still crying a little bit, but man, that freaked me the F out. Also, one kid whose parents believed everything she said, and she said shit to not have to go to school. Like, first, she was bullied by the entire class. She wasn't. Class was genuinely worried about her as she was homesick a lot that I was bullying her. I guess asking her to answer random questions just like every other student counts as bullying when I know she doesn't know as she hasn't opened her book yet. Then I got a phone call from the kid's mom at 9.30 p.m. saying the kid wasn't coming to school the next day as another kid had threatened to stab her. This was also made up. Tried everything but this kid just didn't want to go to school and her mother believed everything the kid said and genuinely believed everyone was out to get her kid. Sad, really. My mom is a teacher. She once told me about the student who spent the entire class furiously writing Bible verses all throughout their notebook. The student always wore black long capes to school and said they identified as a werewolf. My mom had to call the student's parents one day because the student was writing threatening things on the notebook and drawing very scary pictures. Somewhere in that conversation, my mom learned that the student's dad identified as a ghost and the mom identified as a vampire and they were angry at my mom for trying to stop the student from expelling their feelings in the notebook. They told my mom that she needs to be very careful because they know witches who would come after her from afar. Nothing happened to my mom but it freaked her out for a very, very long time. I'm not a teacher. However, while attending junior high, I was in class with a student who wasn't very liked. He was picked on badly, and I felt sad for him. I started talking to him quite often. One day, we were at lunch, and he asked me to come into the hall with him. He had something to show me. We went out into the hall, and he brought a knife to school. He said because I was so nice to him, he was going to cut me up and eat me. Dead face. No joking. I started backing away from him, and turned around to run to the office. Once there, I was shaking so hard and crying, nobody understood me. I was finally able to tell them what happened, but he was nowhere on campus. They never found him, and for years I never went out alone. He scared me so badly. I remember his name to this day, and still try to Google him to see if I can find his name out there. This happened around 1978-79. I hope he got the help he needed. A student passed out in class. He ended up kind of slumped against the wall on the floor. He came to almost immediately, and I think it really freaked him out, so he stood up, I guess to leave the room? By that time, I was near him, and as soon as he was vertical, he obviously was still lightheaded, shouldn't have been standing, and he sort of collapsed onto me. This is high school, and he was a tall kid, much taller than me. I tried to get him to sit down and wait for help, but... He kept staggering toward the door, half conscious with me supporting him because if I let go, I was worried he would hit his head on the way down. It took all of my strength just to get him lowered safely to the ground because he was kind of fighting me to stay standing, but also weaving in and out of consciousness and this heavy dead weight. Crazier things have happened, but this was just pure animal panic. Not a teacher, but was a behavioral specialist for foster children in a long-term residential facility. One of the kids we had had ASPD and was the because she had set herself on fire. She was always very nice and sweet to the new staff, and I was warned not to believe it because it was how she tried to manipulate you. One time, she hit a girl for taking her doll and ran to her room and tried to barricade herself in. While the staff were trying to restrain her to carry her to the isolation room so she could calm down, she bit herself over and over and over, every single time drawing blood and started screaming about how the staff had done that to her and they were hurting her. Then she started screaming about how she was going to kill everyone there and how she hoped we would die and everyone we love would die and our pets would die and that she was going to murder them. 
Had a student on her first day in my class, school for violent and at-risk youth, court mandated, but no orange jumpsuits. They were bussed in from all over the city. She was 14 years old and in sixth grade for the third time. Explained to me she hated school, was only there because it's mandated, and she didn't want to go to juvie. But as soon as she aged out, she was done. I told her that was fine. Asked her to keep her seat and try not to distract anyone else. She was cool with that. Until the principal walked past the windows of my room, that girl stood up calmly and without a word picked up her desk and threw it through the effing window. It took six cops to get her subdued and into their squad car. The graceful, two-footed kick she delivered to the chest of the first guy, gently backing her into the car, was nearly as comical as her leap and run from the car. She was slide-tackled by one of our teachers, and we never saw her again. I worked there for four years, teaching English and reading to 6th to 12th graders. It was intense. It's winter. The classroom is on the fifth floor, just underneath the roof in an old building. There's snow outside the window, collecting in the gutter, attached to part of the roof, two plus arms lengths below the window. So during a break, one student, aged 14, leans way out the window, just the legs are still inside, hips beyond the windowsill. Another student, more or less holding his legs for safety, as they went to grab some of the snow collecting on the roof outside their reach. Walking up to a situation like this, you know that you should rather not scare the students. Don't scold them, just try to get the one who's more outside than inside to get back into the room. And afterwards, tell them how stupid they are, and that one of them just missed a nomination for a Darwin Award. I mean, you think about the, the crazy stuff you did when you were younger. Maybe you were completely normal. I mean, I thought I was normal. I definitely wasn't, but man, I probably could have been up for a Darwin Award or two myself. A student, Junior, I connected with. He had some pretty heavy mental health issues. Asked a girl to prom before homeroom, she said no. He walked into my classroom with deep cuts, half to one inch deep and six to eight inches long in his forearms. I could see the bone. His hands were covered in blood, all over the hall and my classroom floor. He had ripped apart an Altoids box and cut himself several times on each arm. He walked up to me with his arms out, no expression. I covered his arms with my blazer and walked him quickly to the nurse. Never saw him again. I heard he was getting help. I think about him a lot. So I'm not a teacher, but I feel like this fits here. I had a boyfriend that had a seven-year-old son when we got together. About a year later, I found out I was pregnant. When I was about four months along, we told his family, including his son. I could tell he wasn't happy, which I understand. New woman in dad's life, and now he wasn't going to be the only child anymore. But then he took it too far. Started threatening to kick me and push me down the elevator shaft. Once we were walking through Walmart and I said, oh look, how cute is this little coat, infant coat? And he said to me, why don't I put you in a meat grinder so you can fit in it? Last straw for me was after going for my first ultrasound. They thought they saw a black mass in the baby's stomach. It was very scary. When we were talking about it, his son said, good, I hope something bad happens to it. Baby was fine, but his father and I aren't together anymore. Two instances come to mind from what my wife, a kindergarten teacher, told me. She walked in on one of her students mounting another one and grinding back and forth. My wife asked what they were doing, to which one of the top responded, we're having sex. Mind you, she's five. The second one was a kid whose parents let him watch R-rated scary movies. His favorites are the Freddy, Friday, Michael Myers series. He came in one day and told my wife he was going to kill her later that day like Michael Myers with a knife. This was immediately brought up to admin and his bag was checked to which they found a hunting knife in his backpack. I'm not sure what happened with the kid but I'm pretty sure DFS was called on the parents. Late to the party but we had a creepy four year old a few years ago. One day he was the last kid to get picked up and his parents were late so it was him me and another teacher alone in the school lobby looking out the windows kid ms slowbone are you gonna let that lady in she looks cold me there's no lady outside buddy kid yeah there is she's on the porch pauses eyes track from the window to door to inside lobby kid 
It's okay, Miss Slowbone. She's inside now. Still squicks me out, lol. That kid was sweet, but so creepy. He used to talk about seeing a lady outside in the road a lot and another lady on the ceiling in his classroom. Not a teacher at the time. I was the student in this story. Really all just a big misunderstanding. I was in middle school in the early 2000s. This was after 9-11, but long before school shootings were as commonplace. Like most middle school boys, I was obsessed with blowing stuff up, tinkering, cool new weapons, etc. My friends and I would build potato cannons and flamethrowers, all sorts of stuff outside of school. I even built a six-foot catapult that won my group the science fair. Fast forward one random day, midway through seventh grade. I'm in the cafeteria with friends having lunch. A teacher runs into the cafe, visibly out of breath, whispers to another teacher who darts directly over to me, tells me I need to report to the principal's office immediately. I comply, wondering what I could have done this time. As I'm walking down, I try and gather some intel. I stop a friend in the halls and soon learn there's a rumor floating around that I brought a gun to school. The truth of the matter is, I did not have a gun in my locker that day. I had, however, purchased a few BB guns from a friend several months before this. We exchanged the BB guns and the cash discreetly at school, and the toy guns never found their way back to the building. I later found out a classmate overheard our conversation, and the details were lost in translation. Coincidentally, by a sheer stroke of luck, on this exact day, another friend had been returning from a vacation in the Carolinas. I told him that if he could get his hands on some M80s or any other serious explosives to bring back as much as he could, and I'd paid him in advance. Unbeknownst to me, my friend had brought 12 kilograms of fireworks to school that day and kindly stored them for me in my locker. I was frequently buying and selling things at school, so my friends and I all knew each other's locker combinations. So, when security, being tipped off about a weapon, went to search my locker, they instead found it stuffed to the brim with explosives. Police were involved. It was a mess. I will say this story ends on a happy note, because I was ultimately expelled from school, and with nothing to do all day, my mom bought me a basketball. I began playing daily, and fell in love with the sport, going on to play in college and coach for several years after. I mean, if you had 25 pounds of explosives in your locker then and it worked out okay, like, cool. Um, again, I know it was not intentional, but uh, I mean, you got lucky, man. Now, you, who knows, probably in jail. Trigger for violence and animal death. Not a teacher, but an ex-student. This happened way back in middle school, so we were pretty young and we didn't really understand the situation until much later. There was this kid in our school. He was adopted when he was grown up, six years old or so. So he had pretty intense trauma from not only adapting to a new country, but also because he was abused before he was put up for adoption. Also, by the time this whole thing started, he knew the language almost perfectly and had integrated. This kid did nothing all day. He just played video games on the class computer, probably because his mother was a Karen who would get mad if anyone tried to tell his child what to actually do something. The teachers didn't know what to do, so they just let him do nothing. He was pretty calm. He sometimes did stupid things like putting down his pants in the middle of class or hitting the class rabbit, but I mean, there were worse kids, so teachers weren't really wary of him. Until one day, he just snapped. It was terrifying. He started screaming and hitting the teacher while saying insults I didn't know at the time, but I can say they were pretty really harsh for a kid. The teacher, scared, called in the principal, who was this elderly super sweet woman, but who knew how to put people in their place. But even her strong personality and three teachers worth of physical strength weren't enough to stop the kid. He was hitting and throwing things. At some point, the principal got tired of the kid, so she told him to stop acting like a baby. He went absolutely ballistic. He took the rabbit from its cage, and in a fit of rage, he threw it out a three-story window. Needless to say, the poor rabbit died. I will forever remember the pure terror in the principal's face at how a kid could do this and keep a straight face. He left the school, never knew what happened to him, probably got sent to a minor center, 
I would say poor kiddo, but honestly, I can't bring myself to say it. As a high school English teacher, I've seen my fair share of strange and concerning behavior from students, but the scariest thing I ever witnessed was from a quiet and reserved student named Emily. One day, while grading papers during my free period, I noticed that Emily had submitted a short story for extra credit. It was well written and engaging, but as I read further, I began to feel uneasy. The story detailed the murder of several classmates in graphic and disturbing detail. I immediately brought the story to the attention of the school's guidance counselor and principal. Then, they arranged for Emily to have a psychological devaluation. It turns out that she had been struggling with some deep-seated personal issues and had been using her writing as a way to cope with her feelings. It was a sobering reminder of the importance of being aware of the signs of mental distress in our students and making sure that they have access to the resources and support they need. I'm not a teacher, but if something I did as a kid counts up as something scary. So, if you're Asian, you'll be familiar with having tutors who would come to your house to teach you. My parents generally didn't have time, so they had me tutors for a very young age. So this one guy used to tutor me back in third grade, and I hated tutors. One day, he was trying to make me do my homework, and I was throwing a fit. He threatened to complain about it to my mom. I straight up pointed my finger to him and said, If you send that to my mom, the next day you'll be smacked without your underwear. From the next day, he brought me chocolates to make me study. I was such a horrible kid. If you're out there, sir, I'm really sorry. My parents, later on, gave up on assigning tutors because I would generally throw a fit or not study at all. Didn't happen to me, but to a colleague. We were teaching undergrad at the time while working on our postgrad degree at the same university, so I knew him as my classmate from the same program, though we taught different disciplines. One day, during the last week of the semester, he told me one of his students had gone to his office and asked him to revise his final grade. Since the kid had failed the course due to many missed assignments and routinely skipping class, and when he naturally refused to pass him, the kid very calmly told him that if he didn't pass him, he'd run the risk of having something pretty unfortunate happen to him because the kid's family was connected. Thing is, the kid's last name was the same as a very well-known drug lord or mobster, and the kid obviously had plenty of money to burn and that was partly why he failed the class since he was always partying, and so on. My friend told me he was struggling with deciding what to do, because on the one hand, he didn't want to pass him and suspected he might be bullshitting him, but on the other hand, it was entirely feasible that it was true, and he didn't want to get sent to the hospital or worse, because he failed a mobster's son. Sometime later, he told me he'd opted to give the kid the lowest passing grade possible, because he didn't want to risk it, and he felt he couldn't realistically do anything about it. Back when I taught preschool, we had a rule that if your kid's sick or showing symptoms or whatever, keep them home. Well, this one set of parents decided the rules didn't apply to them and brought their newly one-year-old boy to my classroom despite his fever, doped up on acetaminophen. I notice he's a little lethargic, so I notify my director and sit him close to me while I'm sitting and playing with the other babies. I turn my head away for one second and I hear a thump. I turn back to find he's fallen back against the mats, seizing. Dial 911. He's unresponsive. I strip him and perform CPR while another teacher cold packs him and my director calls his parents. They arrive just after the ambulance, angry at me for God knows what. I can't remember what they said because at this point I'm in shock. Boss made me finish the day. I quit a month later. Kid was eventually fine, by the way but they pulled him and his sister from the school. Hope he's doing okay still. My aunt was a teacher's aide when she was still in college. At the time, she lived in the wealthier area, and parents would just yell at the school if their spawn of Satan did anything bad. But my aunt was and still is a straight redneck who didn't take shit from no one. So my aunt was aiding for Ms. C, fake name, and Ms. C was also a younger teacher, who kids loved to walk all over, and my aunt had none of it. Then after about two years, she had the nickname Blue Balls by the teens, and she was aiding a group of 14 to 15 year olds. 
In this class, Ms. C had gotten sick and went out of the class. Here is this 22-year-old woman, and she was very pretty, in a class full of 14 to 15-year-old horny boys who were spoiled shits. My aunt was letting students walk around and visit when she looks over and sees a male student coming over to her. The student we will call Tanner. Tanner was led of the football team and was known by Aunt. He had a record for touching girls, and he has still gotten away with it. Tanner asks to go into the back of the class to ask a question. My aunt thought it was something embarrassing or he needed privacy. She takes Tanner to the back, and then he starts asking questions about sex and other inappropriate stuff. She's uncomfortable, then Tanner gets closer to her and closer, and she asks him to back up, and then he exposes himself. My aunt pushes him away and starts saying, no, 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 no. He starts yelling that she led him on, and he's owed it. Ugh. She runs out of the room, and then she called down to the office to report him. The cops came to escort him out of the room. So days later, my aunt is scared and is in the office. Well, these parents are yelling at her, saying that she's a artist and their kid did nothing wrong. But the school had enough and suspended him and he was kicked off the football team. But after only two months suspension, Tanner was back, but he was really mad at my aunt. But after school around five, he followed her to the bathroom during tutoring time and almost stabbed her with a knife he snuck in. My aunt moved, then he missed, she tackled him and took the knife. Tanner was only expelled, since he got a fancy lawyer. My aunt left that job after going to court, and now, instead of being a teacher, she's a librarian. Obligatory, I'm not a teacher. In first and second grade, one of the smallest kids in my class was one of the loudest and most aggressive or bad kids in our grade. I call him Ben. One time in second grade, I had a hall pass, and I remember passing by the front office and hearing Ben in the principal's office behind closed doors having a full volume shouting match with the principal and hearing him get paddled. It was awful. I couldn't understand why he was like that. Then Ben moved away for several years. Fast forward to sixth grade Spanish class in middle school. Suddenly, Ben was back, but he was now almost six feet tall and very mild mannered. We got along fine, as we were both outcasts, and I was glad to see he was so well adjusted from when I last saw him years ago. There was now another kid who was very skinny, but was one of the loudest kids in our grade. I'll call him TJ. He was a goof and very obnoxious, but otherwise he was usually harmless. A few weeks into the new school year, just before Spanish class had started, TJ walked past Ben and I, and he says to Ben, I heard you and your dad used to get it on. A switch suddenly flipped in Ben. As he stood up from his desk, he simultaneously took his glasses off and slammed them onto the desk. Ben then proceeded to grab TJ and lift him with two hands completely over his head and throw TJ across the center of the room and into the desks. I don't remember much of what happened after that as the classroom erupted into chaos I don't think there was much of a fight. TJ was scrappy but frail in comparison to Ben. I think Ben may have managed to get a few punches in with TJ still stunned on the ground before it was all over. Ben and TJ went to the office, of course, once peace was restored. However, I never saw Ben again after that. Unfortunately, TJ returned after some period of time. I think he may have suspended for his part in the incident. Ultimately, I guess I found out what had been going on with Ben all those years ago. It made me pretty sad. My heart went out to him for the horrible things he must have endured. I actually am a teacher, specifically to students with emotional disturbances that cannot be served in public schools. Mind you, we do not suspend our children if they have violent behaviors. We're there to correct, help, heal. So. I had one student over the course of six months that would target me every day, always with a known antecedent. It took him giving me two concussions, busted tear duct, and a fractured cheekbone before they put him in a different class. He would just walk behind me and attack full force, just punch me in the face, even if I was attempting to get space in between. 
I now have nightmares where I can't sleep, PTSD where I always think one of my students or even my own children will attack me, and it's overall affected my mental health. He's still in the same building as me, but I purposefully hide if I hear him. I still continue to teach this population in the hope I can make a difference in one traumatized child, but it gets harder as the behavior gets more aggressive. Not a teacher, but I worked at a daycare for quite a while. We had a kid who had a literal breakdown. He was eight at the time, and I know he was going through a lot at home. Parents had separated, but they were trying to get back together, and apparently they fought constantly, loudly. He had some behavior problems, but he seemed like he was generally a pretty sweet kid. One day he cut in line, and I asked him to go back to the end of the line. He lost it. He started screaming and running up and down the hall, banging on the wall. I was finally able to get him back to the classroom, and he threw a golf club at my head. Thankfully, I ducked, and we were able to get him locked in an office. He dumped over trash cans, threw everything all over the place, and threatened to spray cleaner in people's eyes or poke them with pencils if they came near him. We were able to keep him locked in there until his mom came, and he was expelled from the program. But as I looked at him through the window, it really looked like he wanted to kill me. In a way, I felt bad for him. I think I heard that he was eventually diagnosed with schizophrenia. It was terrifying, though. I wish I could have done more for him. I wish I had seen the signs. Maybe I could have helped. I dream about him sometimes. He runs up to me and hugs me like he used to. Then suddenly, he's in a straitjacket and repeating over and over, Why didn't you help me? I should have done more. I had a student in second grade, seven years old, who was just all kinds of messed up. I think he had experienced a lot of trauma already. His mom had no boundaries and a revolving door of mean boyfriends, etc. He could be really sweet, but he could also get overwhelmed easily and take it out aggressively on others. My campus had to buy an extra walkie-talkie for me specifically so I could call admin if he was getting agitated and I needed help quickly. The worst thing he ever did in my class was when we came in from recess one day. He was overstimulated after playing outside and all my students getting their materials for our next lesson. He had a package of brand new, pre-sharpened pencils. He used one of the pencils to poke another student. Before I could react and remove him from the other boy, he grabbed a handful of his pencils, turned around, and absolutely stabbed my other student with all of them. I immediately cleared the room, had all my kids go to the classroom next door as the offending child eloped, ran from the room. I followed him down the hall right into the assigned principal. He spent the rest of the day in the office, and I spent about an hour crying in the teacher's lounge before getting my kids and resuming class. I already hated working at that school. They were so unsupportive, and even after this event, it took a while to get the kid removed from my class, and it was the behavior unit. So glad to have only worked there for one year. A kid trying to throw himself over the railing of the stairs down three floors. We caught him by the legs. I was a student on placement, and the only reason we, me and the other student teachers, were involved was because we weren't allowed in the staff room and the cupboard, yes. We had to have lunch in the closet, to where other children started shouting for help when the kids started climbing. Staff came along and reassured us that while, yes, he was trying to hurt himself, he does this all the time, and he's never managed yet, so it's fine. This kid didn't cope well in the playground, so was adjusted and allowed to wander the corridors and stairways unsupervised, even on every break and lunch. He was eight years old. Eight years old. I, I have words. Fight broke out in my classroom. Unfortunately, this kind of thing happens at my school on occasion. Kids in my area don't always have the best coping skills. A lot of times you can see a fight coming and can head off it off at the pass or remove a kid if they seem to be building up for it. For some reason, it's enough to have them go to the bathroom or take a quick walk to blow off some steam. In this case, it was very scary because of how close I was to getting hurt and how out of nowhere it was. 
I was working with a small group while the rest of the class did independent work, taking him through questions and just generally giving extra support. One kid was super quiet, but trying really hard. Class clown type, sitting on the opposite side of me, there were four desks opposite each other with me at the fifth on one side, mutters to the quiet kid, why are you reading so slow? Apparently, quiet kid was very embarrassed about his learning difficulties. What I didn't expect was for him to lunge across the table and start beating the hell out of the other student. This was literally in front of me. Tried to separate them, got hit in the arm, went to the door, and got security in there. Once security escorted the quiet kid out, the class clown was having some kind of emotional or head injury related episode. He was having a full-on meltdown, flipping desks over, tearing things off the walls, and found out later he had a concussion. I didn't see either of those students again the rest of the year. I had to clean blood off of the walls. Weirdest thing was that the weird smirk or grin one of the admin gave me after coming by to check what was going on felt like it was a teaching, hazer thing. Like, well, you've been through a bad fight now, you're a real teacher. Maybe because I'm a guy, but no one was asking if I was okay, if I needed to talk. I was shaking, literally had to go to my next class in a separate room and continued my lessons like nothing happened. Still a teacher four years later, but that was my first taste of disillusionment with the education system. Definitely not the last.